Hi man, Giles, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. We're playing with our tablet of doom again, and this is before we just throw it away. I've got my bench um, set up here. This is my a bit, uh, you know, more professional teardown lab area, which has all the chips, uh, chip debugging equipment and uh, PCB making equipment, rubbish like that. I'm not going to need that though, because I want to try to lift this rock chip and I'm going to use it using this hot air blower, which is a bench hot air blower and a syringe full of really cheap, nasty flux. Just I'm going to turn this on. There might be a bit of noise. Please excuse it. I'm just going to turn this up to 500 degrees C and we're going to just see what happens. So you can see it's definitely hot. So I'm going to now flood under the chip, which is obviously a BGA with solder flux. The problem I have with this PCB and working on it, you can see right away, is that it it really acts as a massive heat sink because it's quite a, a thick PCB and because it's screwed to this chassis, it's dumping all of its heat into this screen display. But you know, we're just gonna try. We don't care if we break it. You can see it must be hot because the flux is evaporating almost immediately. So what I'm going to do is try to leave something like this tweezers under a corner and just under its own weight. Just it, When the chip's ready to lift, it should just lever off by itself. If I can just get it to sit there, there you go. So it's sitting under its own weight, that tweezers. I'm not touching it with my hand, just to show you. So this rock chip is a uh, quad-core ARM processor that's used in a lot of Android devices. Normally the, uh, these sorts of tablets and TV media center type units, I think they have pretty good reference designs because most companies, uh, you know, sort of in China that make these sort of ch cheapish tablets uh, tend to use it. Theoretically there's nothing wrong with this processor chip but Frankly, by the time you've removed it, you're going to ruin it. And these devices are so cheap, it's just probably not worth your time trying to do anything other than play, you know, play with removing chips with them. I can see the uh, corner of this IC looks like it's trying to lift, actually. It's kind of bending here. Which is kind of interesting, makes you wonder how flexible these things are. Is it actually melting? Perhaps I should have used a big, bigger nozzle to sort of spread the heat over the uh, surface of this IC, but again, who cares? We're just going to dump in some more flux. Hopefully it'll get underneath the ball grid array and start detaching those solder co contacts. Tweezers are nice and warm now. I just removed them just in case they were acting as a heat sink. I've got my hand resting on the battery of this unit. I can tell you the battery's hot. It really is sinking the heat everywhere, this PCB. If you're ever gonna do this realistically, you have to really unscrew this whole thing. 
Wow, so there you go, that's the ball grid array. Before I turn over and show you the chip though, let's have a look. I'm gonna turn off this, the uh, fan. Just letting it cool down. If you've got one of these fans, if you want to, sorry, uh, blowers, run the fan and coal just to let it cool the nozzle down. You'll preserve the life of your heating element significantly doing that. Where are we? Okay, so there's the ball grid array, look at that. So you can see instead of having the wires come to the edge of the uh, chips like you have in yelled fashion chips like this one around the edge because you've only got the edge then you can make contact which limits how many um, contacts you can make with the piece of silicon inside here. So if you can imagine, I'm just drawing it on here, you can imagine all these wires coming out from that bit of silicon, yeah? You've only got a few around the edge but then ball grid array you can have zillions because you've got not only around the edge but you've got like a big 2d array filled with things like that and this is the uh, arm cpu chip and you know it's not usually hot now they don't have massive heat density these things but uh, that's it that's the inside of it well, I say the inside, that's the underneath. That's where it's flipped over. So that's why it's so hard to solder these. If you're going to try to solder them by hand, you need a lot of equipment because you have to make sure that each one of those microscopic balls of solder is melted and adhered to, uh, is adhering to the sort of PCB well. And that's going to be absolutely bonkers to try to do by hand. But people do do it by hand and they use ovens and all sorts of tricks. Some, some people, you know, I heard they actually use a, an iron and they put the whole PCB on an iron. Um, in terms of flexibility, this seems a lot less flexible now, but I reckon I'm going to have a go, see if we can just kind of crack it and see if we can just take the top off it to get to the innards inside. Okay, so we've got a chip off there, we've taken a bit off. I can see it, I can see the chip, I can see the silicone-y. Oh, there's a bit of it. You can just about catch the edge, do you see it right in there? bit that looks like a piece of glass that's probably as good as we're gonna get <laughs> maybe if we're lucky we can just crack this one open peel it back yeah so that bit of shininess in there is the actual bit that does all the work and you can see all of that big packaging is to do with dissipating heat and all of you know rooting these contacts and it always looks like there's a small pcb like this material itself is bonded on the bottom of the chip is actually like a small pcb so there you are hopefully that's been as instructional as it has been destructive please be careful if you're going to try to do this on any real equipment you want to keep because i don't think um, you'll have much luck if you do it the same way i did it just take a lot of care Please feel free to comment down below and as ever, thanks for watching.